All right, I'm going to work on some of the things that he's going to be wearing in his belt and on his side. And uh, it's going to be a, hand, a small handgun. This is the one that was used in the movie uh, uh, Jeremiah Johnson, I think. That's what the title of the picture was, anyway. This is a painting by a friend. And uh, I'm looking at the uh, hand axe. They would have had a hand axe because it would have been useful for a lot of things other than being a weapon at one point, maybe. And uh, a knife sheath that I've uh, scaled to uh, the uh, figure I'm working on. It had a certain length of a ni uh, knife blade and so I've uh, scaled that. This just shows a picture of, of uh, the gun or handgun in the guy's belt and I zeroed in on that area. Uh, this also down here shows a pouch that he wears around his neck. Uh, it would have tobacco in it and, uh, and, and other things that he would need. Uh, these are photographs of uh, a painting of wearing a gun in his belt, uh, the pouch and the horn. And this is an old drawing by, uh, a set of drawings by Remington of Mountain Men, which could be true, I don't know. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to try to do today is work a little bit on that. I've got some people coming over, so I don't know how long I'll be able to sculpt. Uh, I've got some friends coming down from up north. All right, be right back. Time to play with some clay. I'm making a handgun. It's gonna be a short one. I got a I got a sliver right here in my finger, and me pressing on this knife just hurts the heck out of it. And I've been trying to get the sliver out of my finger, and I can't. So anyway, just have to do the best I can. I'm going to use this uh, short piece of fondue stick. That's what this is. It's not a, a dowel. It's a fondue stick. You can get the big ones uh, for people with big appetites, I guess. I don't know. Okay. waiting for this uh, super sculpty to soften up. It's finally softened up a little bit. It's cold in the studio. It got down to the single digit temperature last night. And uh, still winter. Most of this gut is not going to even be showing, but I've still got to sculpt it.
Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of aluminum wire to be the ramrod for the uh, handgun. I've got to straighten out the uh, wire so that uh, it doesn't look weird. I was getting a little too carried away with this handgun and I need to have one that's big enough to fit in his hand. Let me show you here. Now the gun I've got is too small. I mean the, the handle is so I've got to match the size of the hand to the size of the the handle of the gun so it doesn't look way out of whack and I was going into too much detail on the gun and I really don't need to because I'm planning to put the gun in between his belt right in there and the gun will have its uh, butt of the gun handgun coming out and that's about the only thing you're going to see of it so I'm going to redo the handle and then I've got to drill a hole or dig out a hole so I can put this uh, handgun into uh, his belt. It's uh, complicated. So I'm going to have to dig out a little bit of this shirt and I'll redo the shirt, it's no big deal. And I'm going to dig out an area for the gun to go through his belt. Brush handle to pop, poke through here. So I can get the gun in the right position. There we go. take a couple of minutes and just go ahead and paint that uh, handgun handle. The uh, paint has a tendency to st stiffen up the clay a little bit, uh, the uh, Super Sculpty. And uh, that's a good thing, as well as making it look like the rest of the clay. I need it to be stiffer than the rest of the clay because I got to work around it. Anyway, I'm going to uh, put the barrel end of the uh, handgun right there. 
to use regular clay for that. Uh, should lie. Yeah, it's a little bit long. Gotta put it back a little further. Yeah, that looks better. I'm going to just uh, put the shirt, the loose-fitting shirt, come down right over the the barrel of the gun, so that there's uh, no problem there. All right, I'm just going to take this ball tool and push it into the uh, barrel of the gun to give me a what looks like an opening in the handgun. There we go. I don't want it too deep because they got to make a mold of it. I'm constantly thinking of the mold making process while I'm doing all this. All right, now that belt has got to reflect the fact that the gun is pushed through it. And so I'm just going to have it come up and over the uh, gun. Now I'm going to have his shot pouch on his rear hip. It's going to be hanging off here, and the powder horns be back here too. Um, I'm going to have a strap coming around like that, and uh, I'm going to make that right now. Well, I'm not going to make that yet. I'm going to wait till I get to the point where. I need to make the strap. Right now I just need to make the powder horn, uh, powder horn and the uh, pouch. Now I gotta make the uh, decision. Oh, finally the fan turned off. It's only been on for an hour or more. Let's see. It's gotta have shape and form to it. I'll cut it off right there. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I'm going to put it on here. That's a good place for it. And I'll bend it a little bit because it's, it'll be a soft leather pouch. I'm not, I could put fringe on it. I don't know. I'll decide that when I get to that point. Okay, I'm going to use my homemade silicone tip tool that uh, I made about a year ago or less anyway I'm going to just form this lid or this flap that he can easily open up Bend it up a little bit just to give it character, like it's been used. A 
Okay, I'm going to put brass tacks on the uh, lid or the flap just for decoration. I want them all the same size. There we go. The only one that won't be the same size will be the one right on the uh, flap here. See how what kind of what these little tacks will look like, and what size I want to make them. Yeah, it's a good size. Okay, I got the straps on, and. Uh, I've got to thread this one through. I got a lot of work on that shirt to do. Now some of you who have never seen my videos before are probably asking, what the heck is he doing with paint? Well, as you can see, the uh, Super Sculpty is a different color. And it's less confusing to the eye if everything looks the same. And if I'm showing in a gallery or at an art show and, and I'm showing my clay, I'm not gonna be asked over and over again, why is that a different color? It's just uh, takes away a question. I took a sample of the clay to a paint shop in this case here in Annis, Montana, where I live, it was uh, the uh, True Value store. They sell house paints there. And, uh, and don't worry, I'll be forming the shirt around it too. I've got to show stress on the uh, strap. Anyway, I'll get back to what I'm talking about here. So, what I do, did was I took a sample of my clay that I use to sculpt with. In this case, it's a J-Mac medium grade or medium hardness and uh, had them match the color of the clay so that uh, when it dries, it looks like the uh, clay. Taking away the confusion to anybody looking at the clay, that different colored clays would give. I do this with uh, wax, which is dark brown, and I do it with the uh, any clay that does, has a different color than my clay. Uh, it doesn't hurt to put this on. It uh, actually, uh, in some cases, hardens the clay just a little bit more. I'm using a flat indoor 
house paint that's water soluble so I can clean the brush out easily and in a sink and uh, it's worked out well for me this, this paint I had made probably 10 years ago and I'm still using it anyway I've got a couple of people coming over to visit and so I'm going to probably have to uh, call it quits here pretty quick I'm going to work right up until they get here. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.